You all set? Okay, good afternoon and welcome. As part of the 75th anniversary of Anna Maria College, we will take a look at the history of athletics. We will look at how it all began and what is in our future. March is a big month for college athletics with the beginning of the NCAA's March Madness Basketball Tournament. The research for today's webinar brought back many memories as I was fortunate to be one of the coaches for the Sweet 16 men's basketball team in 1996. Sister Alon graciously allowed me access to the archives. It was quite interesting to see how athletics started and how far we have come. I thought two of our first teams started in 1977 under athletic director Steve Waskovich, one being men's soccer and the other women's basketball. After an email from Janet McCarthy, class of 1964, come to find out we had a women's basketball team and cheerleaders back in the early 60s. Fran Crowley Hurst and Bernadette Warren, both of the class of 64, were teammates as well. The women were coached by sister Antoinette Marie, who maybe at that time may have been the Gino Ariema or the Coach K of her time, and they played Salve Regina, Becker Junior College, as well as many other schools. Ladies, you have seen the game change a lot from back in your day, as women could only play half court, guards on one side and forwards on the other side, and only two dribbles allowed. You and your teammates laid the groundwork for what has come, what, what was to come later, years later, and we thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce our panelists. The president of Anna Maria College, Mary Lou Hey everyone. Hi. Joe Brady, class of 96, played men's soccer as a student athlete, former women's soccer coach, and now is the director of athletics. Hello. John Conrad is the men's basketball coach and assistant AD for compliance and contest coordinator. Hi. Steve Waskovich was our first athletic director and is a member of the Hall of Fame. Glad to be here. Sharon Zenovich, class of 84, played field hockey, softball, and basketball as a student athlete and is the former field hockey and softball co coach. She is a Hall of Famer as well. Paul Phillips is our former men's basketball coach, currently the assistant athletic director for alumni and community engagement another Hall of Famer as well. <laughs> Melissa Paulus, class of 97, played women's basketball and softball as a student athlete. And she is our new women's basketball coach. She is a Hall of Famer as well. Hi everyone. I am Mike Burles, and I will attempt to be the moderator for today's webinar. And I also serve as assistant athletic director for athletics development and I am not a member of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> we would like each panelist to share some stories and experience about Anna Maria Athletics. We encourage our listeners to submit questions through the Q&A tab, as we will have a segment for questions and answers later in the program. At that time, our panelists will be able to ask each other questions if they choose to do so. Also, we will be awarding prizes for special meaning athletic numbers based upon your registration number. We encourage you to stay for the raffle. We have an American Express gift card donated by Steve Carey of Polar Beverages, special 75th anniversary pint glasses, and of course, Anna Maria Athletic Apparel. It is my pleasure to introduce our first panelist, President Rattel. You have been an outstanding leader of the college and an enthusiastic supporter of athletics. You have a great understanding of the program and an appreciation of what it takes to truly make athletics continue on the path of excellence. President Rattel has been at Anna Maria for 10 years now, seven as our president. She is visible at many campus events, I know I speak for many in thanking you for your outstanding leadership through the pandemic. Welcome today 
to our webinar. Thank you, Mike. I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad to see my name is spelled right as opposed to the telegram as Gazette which said Mary Lout Rattel, which was which was very exciting. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm 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 uh, you've got a wonderful panel here, and I know that you've worked hard to um, bring this group together. And uh, the response, uh, I think, has been tremendous, the number of people that um, are participating today. So I know that you have a lot to say from the panel. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you have. I know you have a, a few that you probably want to ask me. And then, of course, at the end, I'm happy to answer any questions in general about the school, if anyone is um, is questioning uh, anything besides athletics. I'm happy to answer that as well. Yeah. And I think one of the first questions we would probably wanna have you answer is, how has athletics changed during your time as president? Um, well, I mean, there were a number of things that have happened um, since I became president. Um, I wish that, you know, frankly, and, and we'll probably get to it as we go through this, uh, you know, I'd eager to do even more. Um, we did eliminate a few um, sports. We eliminated um, golf, men's golf. We eliminated tennis uh, and men's volleyball, but we did add men and women's uh, hockey and uh, women's lacrosse uh, to our, our, our portfolio of athletics. Uh, and I think that has added a great deal uh, for the overall um, balance um, for our women's sports as well. Um, I think there's a better uh, communication uh, with, with our other departments, particularly under academics and um, admissions. The focus, I think, um, really changed a little bit, maybe because of my background, sorry, uh, in enrollment. Um, but I always saw, and I always had the pleasure of working with athletics at the institutions I worked at previously to Anna Maria. Athletics was an important part of um, the tradition at the schools I, I both attended and and worked at. So knowing that and knowing the importance of athletics and contributing to the overall enrollment, I think has been um, a, a different um, uh, emphasis. Uh, along with that is the student support and student success center working so well with the coaches and the and the relationship uh, with them, uh, particularly under uh, our new athletic director, uh, Joe Brady. Uh, speaking of that, our AD does report to the president's office. That is not altogether common, um, but I want to make sure I hear the voice directly about the concerns of athletics. And they are, uh, per Joe particularly, but uh, through you know the voices of all the coaches, uh, any kind of strategic planning, he's at the table. Uh, so it's such an important part of, I think, you know, the overall longevity of the institution that it would be remiss of me not to have him um, and the representation of athletics at that strategic. You are considered the number one fan <laughs> on campus. Well, my, my short time at Anna Maria, I, you were like everywhere. Paul and I, Paul Phillips and I have made the point, it's like, my God, she's like here, there, and everywhere. So why do you feel it's important to be a, at as many games as possible? Well, um, Number one, um, I have a great deal of respect for athletes. Uh, I was not a student athlete, um, but I have always recognized how important the work is of the coaches, the commitment um, that they've always had to the institution, the pride that they always had, and they instill it in the students. Um, the other aspect of it is I think our student athletes, uh, you know, they have their obligation and we always say the student athlete, um, first and foremost, they are here to get their degree. Uh, but, you, you know, you add on to that the obligations that come with being an athlete, uh, whether it's practice, um, training, the games, the travel involved, uh, all of the sessions that the coaches have with them and strategizing uh, to be successful. It's a big time commitment. And I've always uh, thought that, that I, I always had a great deal of respect for that. I also think it's important to be there and supporting the, the programs because they are the face of the institution in many ways. Our student athletes are the ones that go out and they're the most visible uh, to the outside community. And if I'm showing respect for them to, to be there, I, I would expect them to show the same respect of their obligation to Anna Maria to show uh, how proud they are to represent us. Um, and I hope that that reflects uh, when I 
um, go to to the to the number of games that I do. And then, uh, thirdly, frankly, I, I like athletics. I, I like the yeah. games. I like I like the students. I like to support, and I enjoy myself. So it's not it's not uh, laborious. It's um, it's a lot of fun when I can get there and and enjoy. Um, whether we win or lose or not, it's a, it's a great experience to be there at Anna Maria activities. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, we will come back to you later with some follow-up yep. questions. Uh, but if, uh, if anyone would like to submit a question for President Mattel, please submit it through the Q&A tab at the bottom of the page. Now you can check out uh, our first teams. And you notice we have women's basketball now at the top from 1960 to 64. Thank you to those alums who brought that to our attention. Uh, from here, we're gonna move on to see how uh, our logo has developed over the years from the original AMCAT to the new AMCAT there in the bottom right-hand corner. And I think there's one last picture that we wanted to show. And I believe, Steve, you might correct me on this, but this might've been the first athletic fundraiser because it looks like they're selling these t-shirts and there's a lot of throwback stuff going on here. So maybe this is something we could work on, Joe. <laughs> so at this time, uh, our next panelist- Mike, think, Mike, have we identified this young woman? I, I haven't been able to, I've been through all the- Because if she's fundraising, I'd like to get in touch with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll suggest her to uh, Bridget for you. <laughs> Our next panelist really needs no introduction if you are aware of the history of Anna Maria Athletics. Steve Waskovich is the father of Anna Maria Athletics <laughs> and a Hall of Fame member. I heard someone giggle. Steve was our first athletic director from 1977 to 1997. Steve not only helped start our athletic teams, but coached some of them as well. He built the program from ground up, literally with the Fuller Activity Center. Steve made Anna Marie Athletics into the well-respected program that it is. I know Steve probably has 101 stories and I am hoping that he talks about croquet sets and jigsaw puzzles and maybe a story about the pig on the field, but I am sure there are many others. Steve, welcome, and we look forward to you sharing some stories with us. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's a great opportunity to be able to speak to everybody and tell some of those stories. Hopefully they can get a few of them in the time frame that you're allowing me. It's rewarding for me to see the growth, uh, having gone to, back to Anna Maria for the past couple of years to see all the changes and, and see the fruit of everything that the, the former athletes did way back when, when we had, a, had nothing to, to, to work with. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. It's also rewarding to see the amount of alums uh, on this board, seeing Joe come back as, a, as the AD and Melissa as women's basketball, Sharon, field hockey and softball. It's great to see these guys come back. And it's also great to see you and Paul back as former coaches. Um, so it's exciting to see that, that all those things we did way back when are, are paying off now. You guys are all important to the growth of the program also. Some of the stories that Mike asked me to, to speak about, one was my, um, when I first got the job, it was in April of 1977, I hadn't graduated college yet, and they hired me um, as an athletic director with no athletics at the time, and nice picture, Mike. Um, <laughs> well, we got some other ones in there, Steve, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but my first contract was $12,500 negotiated by one president, and that was in April. And then when I started the job, I came back to sign, we had changed presidents and they said that they were going to pay me only $9,500. So back then we didn't have jobs. So we had to uh, take that. So we got started. And back then we had about 300 full-time students, 50 or 60 men, no fields, no courts. Um, so it was pretty interesting. Excuse me, Steve. Some people think, excuse me, Steve. Some people think this was the real athletic director. <laughs> And I really can't disagree with that. She <laughs> was the, the backbone of the operation. She was a mother to all of us. Oh, man. Uh, I, I say about Nancy that if we took all the athletes that she saved by counseling them, she'd have the, the top 10 team in, in ever at Anna Maria College. 
the story I tell all everybody was my first day on campus. I went to Sister Irene Souquet, who was the business manager, and I asked her to see all the athletic equipment so that we would know what we needed to buy. And she took me downstairs in Trinity Hall, and it was about 10 by 10 with a curtain door. And she complained all the way down that they had all this money spent on athletic equipment and that the kids weren't using it. And she hoped that I could get them to use it. She opened the curtain and the room was chuck full of croquet sets and jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> but that was my first day on campus. <laughs> but after that, we just had a series of meetings with all the athletes on campus, the, the students on campus to find out what their interest would be. And basically with the thought of starting maybe some intramural programs but their interest was a little bit stronger. And we ended up having some more teams with women's basketball and softball that first year. Um, and and they, they actually did pretty well. But the one story for me that I think applies to all of them is that sitting down with these kids, letting them know what we were gonna come up against, um, they all still wanted to do it. Not having a lot of equipment and fields, they still wanted to do it and, and, and get the seed planted. I can remember sitting in the little universal room off of the Zecco Center, it used to be the Founders Hall at a 16 station universal for men's basketball. And we had nine guys show up, which of three had, had only three had only held, the only ones that have ever held a basketball. And six, I don't think I've ever touched one. And one of them was a soccer player that only touched the ball with his feet. But they said, listen, we'll go out. We wanna get this thing started so that we have a team in the future. And they did. And our first game that we played, and yes, we played two games that year, the first uh, six games, I'm sorry, the first game we lost by 100 points. Yes, we lost by 100. But the good news, and I think it's a sign of the growth of the college, is that we came back and played that same team in the second semester. We only lost by 19. So I think that was uh, some progress and has continued. The other one is that for the teams that had needed fields, we had one field that was up in front of what the new dormitory is, and it was on a slope. There was probably a 12 foot drop from one side to the other. We were playing field hockey on it. And I think Sharon, you, you said you mentioned, you might've remembered this, that in the middle of the field on one side was a big, big willow tree. And the nuns being the environmentalists that they were <laughs> would not let us cut it down. So we, we had to play around it. And it took us about, I think four years to get that tree cut down so we could play on that field. One thing with only having 300 kids at the college at the time, or 350, we struggled with numbers all the time. And we tried to maintain our teams that we would be leaving for one of our games and we wouldn't have enough people. We'd have to pull a van up in front of the dormitory and run in and grab someone who'd never played before, give them a shirt to get them on the field so we could keep our games. And I thought that was important because we wanted to maintain our commitments to develop the relationship with all the other schools and, and not get into the point where we we're canceling games and we also wanted to be members of the NCA, which we had to maintain four men and four women sports at the time. So these kids stepped up to the plate and they got that done. And we, I really can't say enough about those guys that came out and ran cross country. We pulled them right out of bed to run into a meet on a Saturday morning, putting golf clubs in kids' hands that never swung a golf kid before. So we'd have five guys to play. And that's how it all got started. Some things that we did back then we probably wouldn't do now is I coached softball for the first 10 years and took our first softball trip to Florida. And it was me and 10 ladies that drove in the Anna Maria College van all the way down. And we practiced for a week. We didn't play any games back then. And uh, so that was interesting. It's definitely something that probably wouldn't happen today. <laughs> and because of all these kids, they persevered and we maintained. We became founding members of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. Um, which gave our kids an opportunity to play for championships, make all-star teams, and and um, and then eventually we got an automatic berth to the NCA, which ended up being a, a great thing for all of us, especially um, the men's basketball going going to the Sweet 16. Then we started to build some fields. Finally, we built Caparso Field, not as you see it today, but as it was back then. We had a grass field that Caparso donated money, and we built it. And it was great. Um, one interesting story I, that I'm really proud of is baseball and softball. The present softball field we built ourselves is still there. Baseball field is gone now, but we had built these fields um, with the help of a lot of different people. And it just started by at one of the athletic banquets, just mentioning to the parents that were there, all I need is someone to donate a bulldozer and we'll get this stuff done. And afterwards, Mr. Martin came up to me and said, you know, you need a bulldozer. What for? And I told him, and he, 
within two weeks, he had two bulldozers the size of a small ranch house on our campus, stripped all of the dirt off, leveled the fields, and put the moon back on. And then from there, we brought Paxton Municipal Light came in. They helped us build a backstop with the telephone poles and chain link fence that we had got donated. And then we had another parent donate all the infield dirt. We spent the whole day just with his pickup truck bringing dirt on the campus. And then I thought the nicest thing was community involvement is that Rutland Youth Soccer used to use, want to use our field. So they brought 100 kids up between the ages of 7 and 12 years old with their parents with rakes. And we hand raked the whole field, both of them, baseball and softball. And we got to the point where we were actually playing on these fields. And I do have to put a word in at this point is that with my three daughters growing up at Anna Maria College, they spent most of the time taking care of these fields. I'd let them take the golf cart up and they'd pick stones out of the field. At 10 years old, my daughter Jen learned how to line fields and they did all of that. So they were part of it too. So it was really a, a great family thing. And it was a family person. It was, it was good and rewarding um, to see them grow up with that too. They also um, went over to the dormitory and they would, the kids would help babysit when I needed somebody to, when I had to go out and work on the field and they'd have them clean their rooms for them in the dormitory. So they got a kick out of that too. Another big event that I see uh, is the, was the Fuller Activity Center. It took a long time to get this developed, but once it got there, it was a great main, main happening on campus. And I can just remember our first game, Paul and Gramps, you guys remember this one, we played Worcester State in our first game and how accurate, how um, great it was that we won that game with a last second shot, you know, to start off the, the program there. I was very excited or most excited was with Paul and, and as Mike is his assistant, went to the Sweet 16. That was a highlight to a, a lot of things that we had worked on throughout the years. Um, we hosted Babson College in the first round. We hosted, the gym was packed. I think there were people standing outside trying to get in. The place was rocking. We won, went to Salem State um, and, and we beat them. We had busloads of kids from the school go down. And I can remember in the, in the end running on the court and seeing Paul, we both had tears in our eyes and, and my kids came up to me and, and to my mother, my wife and said, you know, we've never seen dad cry before. So that was exciting too. So all in all, um, I want to thank everybody for the first 20 years that I was there. We had a great time. All the things that we had talked about back then are, are coming to fruition now. Um, it's exciting to see the, the fruit of your seeds that, that were planted back then. You come back to campus, you see the Camparso field is reinvigorated. It's now a turf field. Um, we got a football team with, I don't know, 120, 130 guys on it. We got men's and women's ice hockey, lacrosse, even equestrian. And 17 sports all in all, I think, Joe, now you're up to, so your hands are full, full-time coaches. It's got to be exciting for you people that have seen where we came from. It's exciting for me to see where they are right now. So what I'm going to do is I want to invite you all to come back to the campus. I'll go up there and, and gladly meet with some of you old-timers. Maybe just homecoming if we could get you there and, and see what's going on. It's exciting to see, and you really have to come up and, and get an idea of what's going on. And I see Mikey has got the pig on the baseball field, and we used to have an announcing system on campus. And one time, that Sister Irene made an announcement over the loudspeaker that do not go on the field. There is a pig on the field. <laughs> well, the everybody in the cafeteria stood up and ran outside to the field. And there was Sister Irene with a long stick with a banana on the end of it, trying to coax the <laughs> off of the field, <laughs> back to the farm out back. So, but that was, that was that story there. So it was exciting. So I want to thank for the opportunity to speak and I won't go on anymore. I'll answer any questions that we have. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Steve. I, I It's hard to tell people or people to believe the beginnings of athletics at Anna Maria when you tell the pig story <laughs> and where we came from. It, it's just amazing how far we've come. And, and thanks to your leadership in those early years, like you said, the, your plans and things that you want to do have come to fruition. Now, if anyone would like to ask uh, Steve any questions for later on in the Q&A, please go to the tab at the bottom of the screen and submit your questions and we'll get those to Steve. Um, at that point. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Sharon Zenovich, a 1984 graduate of Anna Maria, a field hockey, softball, and basketball student athlete. She is a member of the Hall of Fame. 
Sharon has returned to Anna Maria two times to coach softball from 1990 to 94, and again in 1999 to 2004. She also returned to her alma mater to coach field hockey from 1988 to 1991, 1999 to 2003, and 2011 to 2015, winning numerous conference championships in both sports, and in 2013, taking the field hockey team to the NCAA tournament. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you have some stories you want to share first, or should we get right into some questions? Um, this obviously many, many, many years, um, many stories, um, lots of good memories. Um, I actually started at Anna Maria as a student athlete, um, was able to play three sports, which at the time was not all that common, but much more common than it is today. Um, developed some great friendships um, who I was still very close with, um, you know, throughout the years. Um, then went into the coaching. Um, again, had a lot of great opportunities, had a lot of great kids who are now all adults. Um, some of them are coaching, which I, I just love to hear their stories. Um, but I was blessed each, each and every time I went back. It was, it was a different, obviously a different group. But uh, our, our work ethic and our dedication and our drive was all the same. Um, I was blessed to have the student athletes that I had. And I still maintain a close relation, relationship with a, a good handful of them. Um, again, Steve, you brought up your kids uh, be, being around Anna Maria and athletics. Uh, my kids, too. I mean, I remember one. My daughter Liz was born on a Friday and I was in admissions on Saturday with two recruits. Uh, the husband didn't really appreciate <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> sadly enough, it was pretty close to my oldest son, Ryan. Um, I had him and then I was back on the field within a few days and I had him in a little bassinet behind the field hockey uh, goal. And the goal it wasn't put together all that well. So the poor kid got biffed by a ball. He was just weeks old. Um, but uh, it's funny, there's good memories up there. The kids loved it up there. Uh, they were brought up, you know, in the gym, on the fields. Um, it was a great experience for them. And, you know, they ultimately were, were part of it um, and allowed me to do it later on in life. In fact, encouraged me. Um, my family's been very supportive throughout as well. So um, I look at these pictures and they are hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, research went into those, let me just tell you. <laughs> no kidding, huh? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I, there's no really one specific or many stories. There's, it's just a great experience. Uh, I, I was fortunate to be a part of it. and. Um, be in touch with those those athletes. Um, maybe you could just talk a little bit about um, the year you guys there with that picture made it to the uh, NCAA tournament for field hockey. What that was like and the feeling for you and and your players. Yeah, that that you know again that's that was a special time. It was um, it was a group of kids um, who we worked through this over a couple of years. Um, and the things that we tried to instill in them was just the hard work ethic, the dedication and determination and drive. And the leadership of that group took that team and many teams after that because they all bought into the culture. Um, we were fortunate to, to, to win it, to, to, to win the conference. Uh, they weren't very successful for a few years prior to that, but they were in a different conference, which was a little bit more difficult than we were in the, the neck. Um, and within a couple of years, we had that program turned around. So to have it make a 360 in about two years uh, was incredible. Um, and then getting to the NCAA, I mean, we went down, we played Tufts, who at the time was like, I think, I want to say they were either one or th one or two in the country at the time. Um, and it was, it was quite an experience. I, I think uh, 
those are things you can't pay for. And uh, those girls allowed us to all enjoy that. And we still bring those moments up whenever we do get together. Excellent. Um, we did have a question submitted. Do you miss coaching? And if so, what do you miss about it? What do you miss most? <laughs> um, I do miss coaching. Um, I think, I think the thing with coaching is, is, well, for me anyways, you never lose that passion or that desire or the drive. It's, it was the other things that I couldn't do well, um, being a mom or, you know, a daughter or a friend that the balance was difficult. And each time I, I walked away, it was because I needed to be doing something somewhere else with other people. Um, the opportunities just came up. I mean, Steve was the first one that gave me the first opportunity um, as a coach. Then I got a phone call from Lenny Smith, who actually, he baited me pretty good. He said, if I came back that within a year or two, it would be a full-time position, which it did. That did happen. Unfortunately, Steve, they were paying me about the same salary as you were making way back when. <laughs> so financially, that wasn't a good move, but it was great. I, I loved every minute of it. Um, and then Dave Shea gave me a, a, a call for the, the last time around. So uh, without those guys and those guys just fueling me a little bit, um, it, it made it very easy for me to come back. I mean, could I come back now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be tough. Uh, come on, Sharon. Paul and I are up there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the problem, though. <laughs> whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's a lot. I mean, you guys know the amount of time it's morning, noon and night. It's, you know, seven days a week. If you're not recruiting and you're sitting on a beach enjoying yourself, you're probably losing an opportunity to get a kid. So to keep that balance going is, it was difficult. Um, but would I do it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, again, I was blessed to have the kids that I had. Sherry, we could increase that to ten thousand dollars. <laughs> now they're throwing money around like crazy. <laughs> well, Mary Lou, we could talk a little later if you'd like. <laughs> well, look at those. Look start at those out at ten, and you'll end up at eight five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Look at those highlights we're looking at right now. It's well worth ten thousand. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at that, huh? Well, I'm this... not, I wonder. That'd be funny to try to figure out how many hours that is and what the, the what my hourly rate was, huh? Yeah. We'll just cut Paul's salary. We'll help you out. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Uh, if you wish to ask Sharon a question, please submit it to the Q&A at the bottom of, your, of the page. Boy, I don't know how many times I've introduced this guy, but it's, you know, our next panelist is Coach Paul Phillips. Coach Phillips was our men's coach from 1986 to 96. It didn't take long for Coach Phillips to make his mark on the men's basketball program winning numerous conference championships from 1989 to 96 with an NCAA bid in 1996. And as Steve mentioned, upsetting Babson at the Fuller Activity Center and then traveling to Salem to upset the number one seed Salem State Vikings to advance to the Sweet 16. Welcome Coach Phillips. Did we lose him? No, I'm right here. I'm oh, right here. Minute. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Wait, um, a minute. Wait a minute. I got to start the timer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve went over. He took some of my thunder. Well, right? so, he's the father of athletics. That's so. right. The father of athletics. Um, thank you for having me. It, it's a great honor. I think uh, one of the things that uh, you and I, Coach Perlis, have talked about is uh, – going full circle and uh, now being back in Anna Maria is uh, very special for us. Uh, we keep all of our comments are turned into basketball terms. So we're in the fourth quarter, so to speak, of our lives. And to be at Anna Maria is very special. Um, one of the things that Coach Burles had asked us to prepare was uh, thoughts and feelings of, of the 10 years uh, that I was coaching at uh, Anna Maria. And, you know, it, it's funny when you start to look back, there's so much that you forget uh, about who you played and when you played. And today we're trying to figure out how many ECAC tournaments we qualified for. And, and, and I honestly did not know. And I, 
I did not know how many, uh, come, you know, tournaments we had won, right. League championships and things like that. And the one that jumps out obviously is the sweet 16. And I will talk about that. Uh, but it's the, it's the kids that you get a chance to coach, uh, the people that you get to meet. Uh, I, I beat out so many people when I interviewed for this job. There were three people that applied. Uh, that's honest to God truth. Steve, you have to back me up on this. Three people applied for the position, and the gym floor was not set down yet when I came up to interview. And I surrounded myself with good people. Uh, and we were fortunate because of uh, the uh, college and uh, the president at the time was Sister Bernadette and Steve as an athletic director and Nancy and Roy. And they, uh, they let Coach Burles and I run, so to speak. And uh, we were fortunate to have a lot of good kids, uh, have some success. And then obviously the uh, pinnacle was and I don't know how to spell that, Coach Berlin, so don't ask me. Ooh, uh, the pinnacle yeah. of our <laughs> success was having the Sweet 16 year. Uh, and everything just fell into place. It's funny. Some people have said, is that your best team ever? Because obviously it's the one that went the farthest. And it might, it definitely was not the most talented team that I had coached Anna Maria. Uh, but it was the team that did a lot of things that made it a chance for it to, to fall in place. And our, one of our first things that happened was early in, in December, we had a big time snowstorm. And I had called Steve and he said, if, if you can get up here, you can have practice. Uh, I, I can tape the kids because Ray, our trainer could not make it because of the uh, travel. And I remember I was the only one with a four wheel drive. So I went to pick up Coach Burles and I picked up uh, David Shea and we headed up to Anna Maria. And this was the, uh, again, this was a sweet 16 year. And we were late because the roads were so bad. So I'm not exactly sure what time practice started, but we were a good 30 minutes late, uh, maybe more. And we walked into the gym and I was expecting guys to be sitting down, fooling around, throwing basketballs at each other shooting half court shots, whatever. And they were running a full practice. Uh, they were very organized. We just sat, I, I told the assistants at the time, just let them go. Uh, we're not gonna say a word, let them run this practice. We're gonna observe, they started it, they're gonna finish it. So we had that kind of uh, leadership. And our three seniors that year did an unbelievable job, uh, which was Timmy O'Brien and Tommy Keene and and Jeff Padula, and they uh, they led by example. So the other thing that I truthfully forgot about is uh, when we finished at the end of the season, they come out with the final standings for New England, and they they have the top eight, and we had tied for fourth place with uh, UMass Dartmouth, and uh, number one in New England was Salem State, and number uh, three in New England was Babson, and number uh, six in, in New England was Bowden. And we lost to all three of them during the regular season. Uh, the ones that jump out more would be to open the uh, second game of the season, to open out in the uh, Babson tournament and to play in the championship game against Babson and lose by 20. And then to that was our only loss in the first semester out of eight games. And then we started second semester in the Salem state tournament. And we ended up playing Salem state in the championship and got beat by 17. They were better at that point. And when we got to the end of the season, we ended up hosting as Steven mentioned, the NCAAs and a pack gym. And who do we end up playing Babson and we were up 20 at halftime. Uh, Anthony Carter made a running half court shot uh, to give us a three pointer, to finish off the first half. Wonder where he never, came from. Where did he again? come from? Where did Anthony come from? What do you mean, where did Anthony come from? Right? Quit sick of a community college. Yes, he did. That's right, Coach Conrad. That's right, Coach Conrad. Uh, and then we, 
We ended up bending, but not breaking, but finishing the game, winning about by about 20. And then we had to travel to Salem State. And that game, uh, they they were loaded. They were they were definitely belonged to be number one in New England. And they had all the right pieces. They had the, you know, the big men, they had the shooting guards, they had the scorers, they had every piece and they had a bench. They were 10 deep. And it was late in the game. And I, I don't know, they went up by so many and we called a timeout. And one of their players, excuse me, made the mistake of running through our huddle as we were coming in to speak to me and said, it's, all, you know, hooting and hollering going, it's all over, baby. And our guys snapped. Uh, and I can remember uh, them being pretty upset about the comment and we just went out and took the game away from them and it was it was unbelievable uh small school like Anna Maria uh, beating you know the number one seed so it was it was a great experience uh it was fun uh and uh lo and behold after the Salem State win after all the jumping around and hugging I go downstairs and who's, who's the first person to greet me? Anyone know the answer to that, Coach Burns? Coach Conrad, that was you. I knew that answer. Yeah. And yeah. also, I remember it was a, a driving snowstorm that day. Oh, my you God. Talked about I didn't think anyone was earlier when you went to practice. We ended up having more fans than them. It was, it it was, was great. Uh, you know, we had I, buses, I the buses, buses, everybody. We Everyone, had, cars drove, buses came, everybody. It was great. So yeah. it was fantastic. So that's my spiel. I like uh, Steve and Sharon. Uh, our kids grew up at Anna Maria. Uh, if my wife knew all the stories, she'd probably kill me. Uh, how they, we quote, knew where they were all the time, but had no idea where they were uh, and what they were doing. But um, it was, it was family. That's all I got, Coach Bros. Okay, thank you, Coach Phillips. Um, it's nice that you can remember these things because when we were on the podcast with Travis, you had the, the all your facts mixed up. So obviously, you've done your homework. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure if you got emotional there for a second. And you were. I did. <laughs> I did get emotional. Oh, and just, I was just thinking about the time away from my wife during those. Oh, That's yeah. what made me emotional. Yes. And just out of curiosity, did you have a beer or two after the Salem State game? Uh, I, I did. Have, I think I went over two beers. I think I finally indulged the third beer. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Um, again, if you have any questions for Coach Phillips, please use the Q&A at the bottom of the screen, and we will we'll try to answer those questions later on. Uh, our next panelist is Melissa Paulus, class of 1997. Louis Frias. She is a Hall of Fame member, second on the all-time scoring list for women's basketball. She was recently hired as our new women's basketball coach. Welcome, Melissa Paulus, Coach Paulus. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. I do have to say before I get started to uh, Coach Phillips, while you didn't know where your kids were, I was usually watching them. So, you know, we made sure that they were all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, no, so um, yeah, I'm so happy to be back at Anna Maria. Um, you know, back in the day, it was a blessing to uh, be able to play for this amazing school. I love that we're showing the old pictures. I couldn't, um, I couldn't believe the story that I had heard. Coach Burles had sent me the email um, about the ladies playing back in the '60s, and you know how they couldn't uh, play. They can only go half court. They can only dribble the ball twice. Um, all those rules back in the day. I don't think that. Um, myself or my teammates would have been able to play like that. Um, I don't think we would have had enough uh, holding us back. We um, wore those uniforms, that's the question. I know, <laughs> I don't think we could have worn those either. <laughs> so funny, but I do love that. I love that, they, that you know, the first thing they ever did was women's basketball. Um, you know, my teammates and I, we always had pride in the school and, and to see that and hear about that was amazing, so. 
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, back in the day, trying to choose, um, oh, Carrie Hurley, she was amazing. Uh, she was a senior captain when, um, when I played. I came in as a freshman, she was a senior, she was a great player. Uh, but yeah, you know, choosing different schools, being able to look at different schools back in the day, you know, the thing that really stood out for me at Anna Maria was, um, you know, it was a family. Uh, I think that we've always um, had that tradition here. I remember coming up as a recruit and uh, staying with Tara D'Ambra and, um, you know, just getting a feel for the school and being able to sit in the classes and things like that. Um, and then I remember coming back up with my family and, and watching a game and I'm sitting in the stands and a man came over to me um, and it was a professor that I had sat in one of his classes, uh, Mr. G. And he came over and he said, you're the Oxford girl. He said, hope you're coming here next year. Um, so I just remember feeling like, wow, like he knows me already. Um, and it was such a great feeling uh, back then. And ultimately, um, you know, I, I, I chose Anna Marie and I think it was the best decision I had ever made, um, not just athletically, but also academically. Um, you know, I had a great career leaving here um, in the school system. I, I went to school for elementary ed. I worked special needs um, my whole life. And, um, you know, Anna Marie is the one that gave me the opportunity to be able to, to do that. Um, I also, uh, funny story, I also met my husband here at Anna Maria, um, who was the starting point guard on uh, Coach Phillips and Coach Burles's, uh Sweet 16 team. So, um, you know, Anna Maria also gave me that. Um, and, you know, we built a beautiful family. Um, you know, I have a, a son and a daughter, um, and they're both amazing kids. My son is actually... Um, a junior here at Anna Maria College, um, and he's he's studying uh, sports management, uh, playing for Coach Conrad. So it kind of all comes back full circle, um, being there, and uh, and yeah, I, I just love being back here now in in this capacity as a. Um, you know, as the coach, um, I, I played under two amazing coaches, uh, Robert Mio Martino. Um, I played for him for two years. And then my junior year, um, he had stepped down and Lenny Smith came in. Um, and I was just so blessed to be able to play for both of them. Um, you know, both of them had their different um, coaching styles, but they both were hard on us, like on the court, but loved us off the court. And, you know, I just hope that I can instill that in my girls as well, you know, work them on the court, but you know, that they know that I love them off the court. Um, I remember um, in talking with some of my teammates um, the other night, I was, I was talking to um, Tara D'Ambra, Tara Naraki, um, and Jolene Lepret. And, you know, I just, I gained such beautiful relationships that, that are lifelong, lifelong friends now um, through Anna Maria Athletics. And, you know, they were reminding me of the game that we were playing MIT uh, we were down by 20 and we went in the locker room and coach Mio Martino really laid into us, like really laid into us. And we came out um, on fire in the second half and ended up coming back and winning that game. And, you know, just that, you know, that fire that we hit, that we had, that we, you know, we all played not just for ourselves, but for the pride of the school and for each other. And, you know, I'm hoping as a coach now here at Anna Maria that, you know, I can instill that in my girls as well. Um, another funny story um, that we were talking about the other night was, um, you know, playing against Regis. So Regis College for us was like a thorn in our side. They were an amazing, um, they were amazing ball players, amazing coach over there. Um, and, you know, we always wanted to win. We always wanted to beat them. Um, when we played here in my four years, my freshman year, we had 19 wins. Um, and every year after that, um, we had 20 wins. Um, so we were always, you know, up there competing and we would always say at the beginning of the year, we're going to beat Regis this year. We're going to, we're going to get Regis. And, um, you know, they, you know, they had like bells and whistles and they had an indoor swimming pool and things like that. So, you know, we always said when we beat them on their own court, we're also going to jump in their swimming pool. Right. So we, uh, 
that was like one of our goals every single year. And one year we, uh, I think it was my junior year, we ended up beating them at their place. And sure enough, we all jumped in uniforms, sneakers and all, we dove right into their swimming pool. Um, and I think, I want to say they may have been having practice um, and we, they were like, get out. So we jumped right out and went down. But, you know, that was just a, a great memory that we were talking about the other day that, you know, we stuck together as a team and, you know, we always wanted to, um, you know, compete. So I'm hoping that, you know, my girls are, you know, going to feel the same that they want to compete and, you know, love each other off the court and kind of stick together, um, which I know will happen. Um, but yeah, like one of the traditions that I absolutely love that Anna Maria does every year, and I hope to see more and more, um, is our alumni game um, that they had started back in the day. Um, it's a great chance for all of us to see each other, um, you know, in the in the basketball world. Um, and, you know, I know that they're leaning toward doing that, those type of things too in the other sports and I'm not hundred percent sure how much they do, but um, it's just such a great tradition where we come back together and um, we, you know, when we were young enough, we would play. Now I sit in the stands and watch the younger kids playing in the alumni games, but you know, then we all have um, food and, and drink after and get to hear about each other's kids and, you know, their kids come back and we get to meet their kids too. And um, I just love that tradition and, and um, hope that we always continue to have that here at Anna Maria because it truly as a family. Um, and I do have to say to Coach Burles um, that my husband, Gabby, did say that um, that you are in his Hall of Fame. So I want to make sure I, I brought that up. So thank you, Gabby. <laughs> um, Before we end this though, Melissa, because we are <laughs> running out of time due to okay. other people taking more time. Uh, I was just wondering, I know that obviously you were a basketball star at Anna Maria. We saw you play and everything, but I was wondering if you could just touch upon your softball playing days. <laughs> oh, my softball playing days. Yes. Those were great, great times. I, um, yes, I never played softball before in my life. Um, and I remember Steve Waskovich and a couple of my, um, my basketball teammates and Tara D'Ambra and uh, Tara Naraki, they pulled me into Steve's office and said, Melissa, you have to play softball. And I was like, what? I don't play softball. I don't, I don't know how to hold a bat or, or do anything like that. And they said, no, you have to play softball. We need players because if you don't play, we won't be NCAA sanctioned um, for, for basketball or any other sports. You, like we, we need you. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I ended up playing softball that year. Um, I remember Jody Bush was the coach and Carol was her assistant coach. Um, and I'm on the bench and I was more like their cheerleader cheering them on, you know, let's go blue. What do you say now? Blah, like cheering them on. And, um, one time she looked at me, Jody looked at me and said, uh, Melissa, you're in. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> she was like, grab your mitt. Like I need you on the field. And I, I swear to you the ball, of course, I'm sitting there praying, please, God, do not let the ball get hit to me. Do not let the ball get hit to me. And what, sure enough, I'm standing out there and the ball gets hit to me. And I'm like, all right, you got to make the play. I go running over with my glove ready to go. I literally put my glove on the ground, stepped on my glove, did a 360 in the air and landed on my back. Okay. And there's <laughs> everybody's hysterically laughing. And, uh, but I said, okay, I got to make up for that. And then in that same inning, the next three balls all got hit to me. I swear to you, my, my teammates will attest to this. Um, I had to catch, I caught the ball. I fielded one and I, I looked at everybody like, what do I do? They're screaming at me, throw it to first, throw it to first. And I did, I literally got the next three out. So I caught two and threw one. So I guess I started to catch on a little bit, but yeah, those were my softball days for sure. Well, that's, that's excellent because you did take one for the team so you could keep us NCAA approved. Yes. And it must have been too bad there weren't videos back in that day because we could I'm, use that on this webinar today. I'm very <laughs> thankful that there was not. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Coach Paulus. You're welcome. Uh, any questions for Coach Paulus, please submit them at the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. I think there is one. So when we come back around, there'll be a question for you, Coach Paulus. Yeah. Mike, I got I got one question for Melissa. Oh. Melissa, let me ask you this: How come D'Amber didn't get you to play when I was coaching? <laughs> I don't know, but we can bring that up to her. But I, mean, I, I think yes, we need to address that. 
chair. And honestly, you'd be glad I was not on your field. <laughs> no, it, it would have been good. It would have been good. <laughs> At least been entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> Our next panelist is Joe Brady, class of 1996. Joe is our AD, but in this part, we're going to talk about Joe, the student athlete and our women's soccer coach. Joe is the goalie for our men's soccer program, number two in career saves with 405. He's a former women's soccer coach from 1996 to 2000, most career wins in the program's history, conference championship, and two ECAC appearances. Joe Brady, welcome. Thank you for having me. This has been great so far. Is there anything you would like to talk about or should we get into some questions or? Yeah, fire, fire some questions. And for the sake of time, I want to make sure that other people get some, some time too. So fire some questions at me. Well, why don't you talk about the year of your conference championship and your ECAC trip? So, it, you know, it, it, it was really interesting how fast things went um, after Steve hired me. I was 20 years old. I hadn't even turned 21. I hadn't even graduated. Um, I went into his office and I said, I want to coach. And he's like, uh, I don't know about this. And so he called me back in a couple of days later and he's like, all right, we'll give this a shot. Um, I was lucky and fortunate to have a class that I inherited. Um, I was hired at a time where I didn't do any recruiting um, because it was June at the time. It was I think seven or eight seen uh, those freshmen, that freshman group. Um, that really is the backbone of that whole team and, and the whole success that we had. And, and so we won five or six games that first year. And then the second year, uh, we were fortunate to bring back the two uh, you know, Titas twins who had transferred for some academic reasons, but then realized that they wanted to come back and, and, and play and, and graduate from Maria. So one of them was goalkeeper and the other one was uh, a 30 goal scorer. And, and that's really the reason that we had the success that we did on, on top of not just that freshman group, but then a sophomore class um, that was also very talented. And we just caught on fire and just kept on winning games. Um, and then we played in the conference championship. And if I remember correctly, it was against Gordon College, um, who had had a lot of success. And it was pouring rain. The field was a sloppy mess. And we just dug in and, and got a win. And, you know, I, I still was two years into this. I really, I had, you know, an idea about the ECAC tournament from my time, you know, uh, with the basketball team. But then to get the bid, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, we were actually going to go on a real bus and not a van for the first time. Um, and we went up to Williams. And we started hearing the stories of how mad they were um, about not getting to the NCAA tournament. And, but we went out there and played hard. We didn't get the result that we wanted to, but it still created a, a lot of success for that program for, you know, about a five or six year run because they did it again the following year. Um, they played in a couple more championships and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, those girls, um, you know, it was hard to leave, uh, but it was a lot of fun coaching that group. Let me ask you this question. You went from being uh, a student athlete and then a few months later, you became the head women's coach. How much of a transition was that for you? Very strange. Uh, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I hung out with them. Right. And I was um, friends with them and I was friends. My friends was, you know, friends with them still. So it was a, it was a real different. Um, it was, it was strange, I guess is the biggest thing to say. Cause I was, and now I was their coach. Um, and I had just been, you know, just graduated with, you know, with just literally just graduated. And so, but what was also kind of special was being a student athlete there for four years. Um, and we had some success um, at least one of the years um, under coach Bob Shenevert. And, you know, we were a team that no one, that everyone wanted to play. Um, our our fav one of my favorite stories is coach Bob Shenevert would say, um, everyone wants to play you um, because on homecoming, because they know they're going to beat us. And we went to Easton Nazare and the place was packed um, and we beat them. And then we got on the bus and our bus driver um, caught the fender unto, up against the fence and we couldn't get out. Um, so we had this big win. We're all happy. And Bob Shenevert was out of his mind that you know, we couldn't leave. Um, 
But, you know, we kept on kind of winning games there. And so what was really kind of special for me was to be able to play um, and have, you know, the, the guys that I played with now I'm coaching and they're still, they were a big part of it and they would come back to games and, um, it, but it was strange for at least a couple of years, for sure. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you helped uh, save the basketball program. Um, when we I would love to uh, tell that in, a, in a, the short version, if I can. It, it always seems to get forgotten about that year that they won a conference championship and they started the year 0-9. And, and I got a phone call and I was at the time a scorekeeper and said, I need you to practice. We only have nine guys. I need 10 guys to practice. I'm like, I don't want to practice. I don't want to do this. I like what I'm doing. I got no interest in doing it. I get another phone call from Coach Phillips again saying, I really need you to do this. I need 10 guys. I'll give you a uniform. I said, well, am I going to play? He's like, no. I said, then I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to be the ninth, 10th guy on a team of nine guys not playing. Um, so I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. You're a team player, Joe. So I got a third, I got a third phone call and I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm only going to play on the offensive side of things. I'm not playing any defensive drills. I'm not doing any sprints and I'm not doing any of the eight minute drill, but I will come every day and I will play as hard as I can. Um, and we won a conference championship. Everybody in the room, you all figure out how we did that. I know the answer. Um, so does coach Phillips, but he still won't admit it to this day. Well, Joe, we owe you a, a debt of gratitude for helping out the men's program that year and having Paul and I come join you up at Anna Maria to continue our, our fun and games. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about this. We are going to come back to you in a few minutes and talk to you about your role as an athletic director. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to talk with Coach Conrad for a little while. And uh, Coach Conrad is uh, our men's basketball coach and has been for the past 15 years. He also serves as the assistant athletic director for compliance and contest coordinator. And he has the most years at Anna Maria on the athletic coaching staff. He is a true veteran. Coach, do you have some stories you want to share or you want to get right into some questions? I'd first like to say thank you for this opportunity. Um, it really is great um, going right back to the beginning here from Steve and to, to think of where we've, where we started to where we are now. Um, it, it, I don't do a lot of reminiscing and going back into the past and looking into things, but, uh, they, you know, you really appreciate, I really appreciate where I am, um, on days like today when we can get together like this and share some of the stories. And I lived a lot of those stories, even though I was not, uh, I didn't go to school, um, at Anna Maria, um, you know, shortly after getting out of um, Assumption College, I did have my first um, opportunity to uh, run into Coach Phillips at Assumption College, um, where he was my uh, JV coach my freshman year. Um, and I, you know, he was at St. John's when I was uh, was coaching at St. John's when I was a player at St. Peter Marion at the time. So I, I knew of him. Um, and, you know, I worked a couple of his basketball camps. So when he took the Anna Maria job, um, you know, there was a, there was a, there was an interest level there already to follow what was going on there. See, and I worked some of all the camps during the summer. Um, my kids had gone to all the basketball camps there. Um, so I had a pretty much of a really vested interest in Anna Maria, even though I was not, uh, you know, I didn't go there as a student athlete. Um, as soon as I graduated from college, Coach Phillips was coaching there. The baseball coach was Pat Remington. Uh, Rem was a kid that I played baseball against uh, in the Stam Usual League uh, for many years. So, um, you know, being a local school and staying local, um, I was very uh, in tune to what was going on at Anna Maria College. Um, I remember, you know, Steve had mentioned the story about building the baseball and softball fields. I don't know how I got hooked into this, but I was just remembering this the, um, you know, this week. Um, that I, re I remember going up there for, I don't know if it was part of after camp, uh, how I ended up doing it, but I do remember going up and helping um, lay out the, the, the gravel for the infield. Um, at the same time, they were putting up the telephone poles for the backstop. 
Um, so, it, you know, I feel like I've been there almost since the beginning. Um, you know, even though I, I guess it, the, the, the sports program really started in earnest while I was in college at, at Assumption right down the street. So I was aware of, like I knew of the free houses, um, uh, both Ray and Lou when they were there. Um, I knew a couple of kids that I went to school with and Sharon as well at St. Peter Mary um, had gone there. Um, Joey Jan Gregorio, who we um, was a year ahead of us, went there to play basketball, had a good basket, you know, was part of their early team. So um, I, I just feel very connected um, to Anna Maria, um, you know, right out of the get go. Uh, you know, then I go on to coach a little bit at, at, at a community college and, um, you know, a couple of the players that we had at Quinn Sig ended up going on to, to, to play at Anna Maria, um, Chris Dion, Kevin Bergenholtz, uh, Anthony Carter, who played on that 96 team. Um, so there was always a, um, a connection. Um, Sharon mentioned the alumni games. I mean, those to me speak volumes, uh, you know, the way, uh, you know, when I took over, um, you know, the alumni game had started to kind of lose a little bit of, um, its impact. And, uh, you know, I, one of the first things I wanted to do was to get all those guys back um, and to get all those players back who um, had played in the early years. And we used to do a theme every year. We brought back the 96 team one year. We brought back all the thousand point scorers. We wanted to tap into the tradition uh, to, to build our program. Matter of fact, the first t-shirt we had um, had restoring tradition on the back. Um, you know, I knew where they once were. Um, don't know if that's ever reachable again. Um, you know, that historic season was a storybook. Um, you know, I was, uh, again, all over, I was part of that. I was in the standing in the corner when they played Babson at home. I was at Salem State when they beat Salem State there. Um, almost took the trip down to Jersey when they played there in the Sweet 16. Uh, again, we had a weather situation and ended up not going. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, when I took over, I really just wanted to bring back all of these wonderful players and people that I had watched, um, you know, when they had played for Coach Phillips and Coach uh, Burles at Anna Maria. Um, I'd be, I've become friends with a lot of them. Um, I'm now recruiting one of the, um, one of uh, Coach Phillips's former players um, who played for me and for Coach Phillips, who's now playing in high school. Um, so the connection and trying to keep, uh, you know, everyone together, again, the, 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 the tradition that we're trying to uphold, the restoring of the tradition, uh, I think it all comes full circle with the alumni games. Um, you know, when we have those events, um, it's really special uh, to see that many people come back and to sit down and have something to grab a bite and have a couple of drinks and relive some old days. Um, the turnout is just wonderful. And uh, I still want to do bigger and better on the alumni front, the alumni game front, even though we, you know, we bring back, you know, sometimes we have 15 and 15 on each bench and then some people that are playing in, in the stands. I mean, so we're bringing back 30, 40, 50 former players, um, in days like today, make you understand how special the place is and um, how special, uh, what, a, what a great community that we're all a part of. Um, and just trying to, um, again, just trying to uh, do great things at a, um, you know, for all the people that have come through here uh, and to make it bigger and better. And during my time here, um, you know, Thanks again to uh, President Rattel. Um, bigger and better is is where we're is you know in my 15 years there, what I've seen in the growth of our the interior of our buildings and in the growth of our athletic facilities and some of the other facilities that we that have come on campus. Um, you know we are this small little school up in Paxton, but we are still trying to do great things. I mean we are we have what it takes, we have the support that it takes. And, and um, you know, we are very hopeful that, you know, across the board that we can accomplish some great things. I, I've been blessed to be part of some, 
you know, that some, some very good teams. Um, but like Coach Phillips mentioned earlier, it's really about the relationships, the kids that we have um, that stay in touch, that come back to the alumni games, that shoot a text, make a phone call, shoot an email, um, come back to the alumni games from California, Georgia, Florida, solely for that event. Um, they come up for an overnight just so they can be part of it. Um, it really is, um, you know, it's, it's really the continuation of just a, a special thing that's going on at Anna Maria. And um, our goal and hope of, for all the teams is to just continue this. Um, Coach, maybe you could just uh, take a couple minutes and I know that you, in your years that you've been there, and we unfortunately that our baseball coach at the time is, couldn't make it today, but maybe talk a little bit about the baseball team back in the day with a little bit of their success, I think when Jay McNamara was coaching. Yep, yep. Well, again, I, you might, I go all the way back to Rema. I mean, you know, I mean, the stories with Rema are great. I mean, there were days that I think, I think the stories I used to hear about Rem was sometimes they didn't have – uh, enough players or they had enough players, but he didn't have enough pitching. So Rem would put on one of the jerseys and go out and throw a couple of innings uh, so they could get in the, get in there seven innings or nine innings. Um, you know, he did an unbelievable job in a very difficult situation. I think Steve can attest to this. I mean, his nine years there, you know, just keeping the program going uh, once we got it started, the hard work to put the field there and, um, you know, and the field that actually before St. Anne's went up, um, the field had actually become very nice. They did a real good job. It had grown in. Uh, it had been taken care of better and better over the years. Uh, so what Steve started with what he put up grew into a very nice facility before we had to, uh, you know, the only place we could put St. Anne's up um, environmentally um, was where it went. So unfortunately, that meant the baseball field had to go. But uh, Remmer did a great job getting it going. We had some turnover, um, you know, in the middle before Dave Mack came in. Um, the one person that, that I think the, the, the coach that had the first winning season there was Richie Coleman, who was there for like five or six years. He was a friend of Lenny Smith. He was a baseball guy, umpire. Uh, he did a pretty good job there. Uh, they had one winning season. Um, they had the first winning season in school history was with Richie. Um, and then when Dave Mack came in, they had a run – uh, God, they, um, from 2010 to 2012, they had three consecutive 20 win seasons. They went to the ECAC tournament back to back in 2011, 2012 and 2011. Um, they were co-champs. They actually won a quarterfinal and semifinal game and they were going to play a final against Endicott. And, um, we had the incredible rains for like three days and they just called off the final. Um, and it was a final that we were looking forward to because we had lost to them. Uh, during the course of that year in the CCC. Um, and, um, you know, it would have been nice to get another shot at them um, in the ECAC tournament, but it never really happened. The following year, they went to the, they went to the finals again in the ECAC. So they had a stretch of three years that was really special. Um, and I think we're, um, you know, we have a, uh, our current team and, um, you know, our current staff, um, Coach Briand has brought in some, a lot of local talent, a lot of good players. Um, so we've had some highs and lows. You know, I think Richie brought us to a point where we finally won. Mac brought us to a sustained level for a couple of years. And, you know, we've just been treading water in between. Um, but I think we're in a period, again, where, where we're looking at uh, challenge, making some, some postseason challenge here in the next, uh, hopefully this year, uh, but in the very near future. The future is bright. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing uh, baseball. I do want to share one more story, Steve. I'm sorry. Uh, it, it, only because, you know, I know we've gone from the CCC to the GNAC. I, it, this is one of my, probably my greatest uh, memory. Um, you know, we were one of the founding members of the CCC, as Steve can attest to, and everyone here can attest to. Um, and in 2010-11, uh, the conference, the, the CCC deemed that we weren't, um, we weren't worthy. Uh, our facilities weren't worthy. Uh, they were moving on without one of their founding members. Um, and, you know, uh, I had a team, uh, our 2000, 
oh God, what year was it? 2010-11 team. We kind of used that. We hadn't even had a winning season in the first four years that I got there. Um, but year five, um, you know, we found out we we're getting kicked out of the CCC, um, asked to move on. Um, and we had a group of kids that kind of rallied around that. Um, and in 2011, um, the 10-11 team, we won the regular season um, championship after not, again, having had a winning season up until that point. We're 11-3 and three during, the, during the regular season. So we hosted um, the conference tournament. Um, we ended up getting beaten in the semifinals in a, just an electric game against Salve Regina, um, who ended up going on to win the conference that year. But um, I, I think, you know, we used a little rallying cry um, in that year, 2010-11. Um, and um, I guess we, you know, it, it's just a, one of those things about, you know, how we used our, that being asked to leave the CCC um, was a huge motivating factor for that 2010-11 team. And we ended up winning the regular season championship um, and hosting the tournament. It was really special. There you go. We've had some fantastic stories and I hope those uh, alumni games come back because usually afterwards there might be a couple of adult beverages and that the stories usually get more embellished. And I know coach Phillips tends to embellish stories. And so it'd be great to have that set up again where we can, you know, have the alumni coming back and, and uh, getting that, those games going again, hopefully this COVID situation will ease up considerably. Um, I'd like to call upon Joe Brady to come back and now we can talk with Joe uh, in his current position as athletic director. And uh, just a couple of questions for you, Joe. Um, how does it feel to be back at your alma mater? How special is it? Yeah, so I, you know, I, when I left um, the first time and, and I left for a long period of time, I, I can honestly say I wasn't really sure that I would that I would end back there. Um, I didn't really know what my next kind of step would be after, you know, after I left and where, where I, at, when I was at my days at Clark. Um, but when the opportunity did um, arise to come back, um, I knew it was the right time I felt for me. Um, if Anna Maria felt it was the right time and they did. Um, so it, you know, when I got back on in July and I, the first football game for me was, I think, when it really hit that I was back at a place that I had really done a lot of different things since I've been there. They didn't have football. And I looked out and I saw the, the crowd kind of forming for the union game and then other, you know, our own fans. And I'm like, well, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I remember the days that the, the gym was packed and when we hosted St. Joe's of Maine, in men's basketball and we packed that gym for that game um, and was able to look and, and see and just kind of feel it and, and the, the way that those guys played um, to win that game in, in an environment that was just like I was used to, um, you know, and I remember saying something to, or coach Conrad, I think said something to me, he goes, that was like the old days and it really was. And hopefully there's more to those to come. And then it just got really interesting from there. Um, we went down to, uh, and I think, so this has special as it's been, it's been a pretty interesting year and a half or two years for me. Um, it started, I think right around, well, it started that weekend or that day that we got stuck in a, um, a really bad accident and our team was at, or we were waiting to see if we could play. Um, Sean and I must've talked about 20 times on what to do. And he was figuring out with Jim Calhoun what to do. And we had to postpone the game. We went back down and, guys put up a big, a pretty big fight. And then things kind of came to a screeching halt after that for the last year. Um, but to answer your question, I think it's been special. Um, it's been now challenging, um, but also a lot of fun and looking forward to getting back to where we were, what we were doing for those first six months to really kind of continue the momentum. All right. Excellent. Um, can you briefly discuss the uh, question came up about the COVID situation? <laughs> I'm not sure you briefly can talk about it. It's it's been mm -hmm. one interesting day after another, I guess. And and it's, you know, I think the biggest, you know, I, I feel and felt so bad in the spring for our teams. And then again in the fall, 
Um, and then again in the winter. Um, and we thought maybe it was going to happen all over again for our spring teams yet again. Um, thankfully, they are able to play. Um, although it's going to be different, it might not be as many games as they were hoping. We still don't know exactly what the conference cho- tournament will look like. But, and, and the things that we have to do for them to play it is very, um, it's hard, um, but we've all stepped up and, and made it work. Our sports medicine staff probably needs the biggest um, compliment um, through all of this. The added things that they've had to do to make sure that they're keeping the kids safe, but our community um, and just, you know, making sure that we're doing all the right things. I mean, they've gone above and beyond, um, you know, every single day. And, and, and it's only going to get a little bit harder as we start to play a little bit more. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's been hard, but, you know, we're, we're getting through it just like everybody else. And, and I'm glad that we're, you know, somewhat on the other end of this, maybe. Uh, hopefully Mary Lou is um, still on the call. Um, but maybe you and Mary Lou could just talk a little bit about the plans for the future. Sure, I'll, I'm still on the call. Like, how, how could I not be on the call with you emceeing? I mean, it's scintillating. Uh, but what I, I will say is this, um, as we go forward, and I think Joe, you talked about it, um, but I'd like to go back. I think Sean's point about that transition, we went from CCC into the GNAC, um, really spoke a lot, I think, to the caliber of the coaches um, that we've had over the years. And, the, uh, and it's evident, I think, in this, in this presentation today. Uh, you know, we, we love our students and they're fabulous. And um, obviously we, we take great pride in them, but um, there's no doubt between the number of uh, great athletic directors we've had and the number of coaches that we have. And I'm, I'm glad to see that we're able to you know, get to a, a point where we're going a full-time stance. Um, you know, that's one of the goals that, you know, when we went into GNAC, um, you know, the, the, the challenge was to improve facilities, to improve our, our coaches to a full-time basis instead of all part-time. Um, I think we were, you know, always uh, showing up at games in, in broken down vans and, and no, no, no kind of insignia that really spoke volumes about the pride that we had in the program. So I think we've made great strides. And now at this point, um, you know, we're one of the strongest um, teams overall in the sense of, of our, um, our heritage and, and the strength of what we're doing in, in the, in the campus um, in the GNAC right now. Um, you know, we're, we're very much respected and I, that's a testament to everyone that's on this call and the many others that have, moved it forward. We've got some work to do. Uh, there's no question. We need. We still need to improve our facilities. Anyone that uh, started in, in the MCAT Center uh, when they first built it uh, knows that it was too small <laughs> the day it opened. Um, and, uh, you know, we're working through that. There are, there are certain renderings uh, to improve that. The fitness center certainly needs to be expanded. We have so many athletes on this campus now expanding uh, that it's, it's insufficient. For, for all of our athletes and our other students who want to participate. Capasso Field, which is now renamed, you know, thanks to Richard Capasso, who really you know, gave us a big boost on that and a great supporter of the athletic program, uh, is overused. And it impacts not only just the time that the teams can use it, but it impacts scheduling for academics um, so that they can get the classes in because they have to coordinate everything. Joe knows this better than anyone. All the coaches have been supportive, but we need we need another field. And, and you mentioned, you know, taking away that baseball field. I know that was probably a very great disappointment for many. Um, and it continues once in a while to come up, but, you know, we're looking at a, at a, at a new field behind Madonna. Um, it's still in the, we do have renderings for it. We're hopeful to be able to put that forward as a baseball and uh, multi-purpose field um, and, uh, you know, continue the growth of, of uh, serving the students. It's just too important a uh, program, and we have too many of the students involved for us to continue to ignore it. So uh, there's a lot of different things, uh, and never mind that. But the roof on uh, Fuller, <laughs> as as you all know, uh, Melissa and Sean, uh, that that's a that's always an ongoing thing. But we manage through it, uh, and really a testament to all of you. So 
we're looking at all of that, looking at the coaches um, and uh, making sure that we continue um, supporting the athletic trainers as well. Uh, there's just too many students for us to, to continue not looking at that. Coach Brady, anything to add? No, I, I, I think, uh, you know, it's things that Mary Lou and I talk about on a regular basis. I mean, we've, we've done, you know, so we just did, um, you know, uh, some a little bit of the work over at Fuller um, with a new court design, um, which looks great. Um, but we still, you know, we still have some work to do there. Um, you know, Mary Lou mentioned the roof. Um, we had some leaks at, at times. Um, you know, some locker room space is, is not adequate um, over there for not just our own teams, but for visiting teams um, when we have multiple teams there. So it's it's a priority for, you know, for both. It's what Mary Lou and I talk about, you know, pretty regularly on how to continue to move the needle, um, you know, forward for everything. You know, I, I, we, there's a lot of teams that practice in that space um, inside um, and it makes it challenging for you know, our other team, you know, our teams, our volleyball team, our basketball team to, to do some work over there when they want to just off season. So it, it's, we have to try to balance it all and, and try to move the needle forward with facilities. Okay. Thank you very much for the, for the update. Um, at this point, uh, Joe, I think we're going to move to the announcements. Yeah, I'll just, for the sake of time, I'll just kind of go through, you know, pretty quickly um, and, and show everyone our, our current head coaches um, and just kind of leave it up there for a little bit so everyone can see. Um, some great head shots and, or, or mug shots, if some might, I might say. <laughs> this is the Joe Brady regime. <laughs> and then, you know, as I mentioned, our, our support staff is also, you know, very important to what we do to these coaches, um, our sports medicine, our sports information, um, office assistant, uh, those, you know, those people behind the scenes are, are doing, you know, an awful lot, and especially in this last year. Um, there's our Hall of Fame, our current Hall of Fame members. Um, unfortunately, due to a weather um, decision that ended, ended up not really being as impactful as we thought it was going to be, um, postponed the first, um, uh, the first date of the Hall of Fame, and we moved it to April. Um, and then COVID postponed it. Uh, we still have five inductees, very worthy inductees that still need their, their day um, for us to honor that. And, and we have not forgotten about that and, and want to make sure that when we do pick a day that we're not going to have to make a decision to, you know, to postpone or cancel it again. So we're still having some conversations on when the best time to do that. And now that things are starting to, to change a little bit, we may be able to do that you know, sooner than later. Um, but this is a great group, um, and those five uh, were, you know, very worthy to be in there, um, especially as we talked earlier about um, the backbone of the department, Nancy Neroyan. I don't know if she ended up joining us. She's probably the only one that's glad that we postponed the Hall of Fame twice because she didn't want that, um, that uh, attention. Um, but as I told her that she's not going to be able to cancel it uh, again, and she will get that attention, uh, attention that is well-deserved. Um, she, you know, like Melissa said, was, was definitely the mother of so many people and, and the first person that you saw, um, and you know, as she does, I don't know if she realizes it, how much she meant to uh, so many people, um, not just the students, but the coaches that worked there. Um, we could not have, um, gotten away with what we did or what we were able to do without her. Um, so she will get her due, um, at some point. Okay, uh, just a couple of announcements uh, concerning athletics. Um, we, are we will be announcing all decade teams through social media and our websites in the upcoming months for the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010. Uh, it's something exciting to look forward to for our uh, student athlete alums. Uh, if all goes well, we will be inviting all of our first athletic teams back on campus and honor them before their respective team's games. 
Uh, homecoming is Saturday, October the 23rd. We will be kicking off homecoming with the AMCAT Alumni and Friends Golf Tournament on October 18th, so save the date. And also our week of giving is coming up April 18th to April 23rd. We have a lot of events going on as we continue to celebrate our 75th anniversary. And this is your chance to help support our athletic programs and the college. So hopefully you'll be able to give uh, some support that week as we uh, work to improve and, and uh, help raise money for the programs and the school. I want to... Uh, Thank President Mattel and all the panelists for taking the time to share their memories and history of athletics. We have a good and strong vision for the future of athletics. I encourage you to check the Anna Maria website and athletic website for updates. These people here, I cannot thank them enough. They were extremely helpful in uh, gathering information, photos, all sorts of goodies for today's uh, webinar, and I certainly appreciate them giving me their time and their support. Uh, the only other thing I would like to do is to thank the Board of Trustees, the President, Joe Brady, faculty and staff, all of our head coaches, assistant coaches, our athletic trainers, sports information, our business manager for athletics, work study, and student interns who are all working so hard to make sure as student athletes and all of our students to have the best possible experience in these extremely unusual times. Thank you for all that you do. And with this, we're gonna to go to the prizes. And uh, what we did was we have special numbers for athletics. So like the number 43 is the number of years of athletic teams. So the 43rd person to register was Gabby Gibson, and she will win some Anna Maria athletic apparel. We used the number six for the 1960 team. This was the year of the first women's team and cheerleaders. I'm sorry, the number 60, not the number six. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, that, that is... John O'Brien, and he will win some Anna Maria apparel as well. The number nine for 2009, that was the first season of football. That is Linda Nolan. She will be winning a 75th anniversary pint class. The number 31 for the number of Hall of Famers. That is Tina Robinson. She will be winning some Anna Maria athletic apparel. Number 36 for the number of 1,000 point scores for men and women's basketball. That is Alex Jordan. He will be winning some Anna Maria athletic apparel. And number 18 for 2018, the first year of men's and women's hockey. That is Nancy Waskovich. It's not a fix, 75th anniversary pint glass. And number 16 for the Sweet 16 will win the $50 American Express gift card. And that is Tiffany Theobald. She was 2016 and she was a cheerleader. And thank you to Steve Carey again from Polar uh, for the $50 gift card. I thank everyone for joining us today. I know we've run over a little bit. Uh, I apologize for that, but there were so many good stories being told and again, uh, as things develop with uh, what's going on on campus and athletics, please continue to check the website and hopefully we'll be able to see you back on campus real soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. Did Mike get off right away? Left. Thanks, guys. Steve, we finally can see your face. <laughs> now, Sorry, no, he's, now he's gone again. <laughs> no, I can see myself here, but I don't know. Joe, when is when can you see the podcast of this?
I've got to um, I got to download it, and then I've got to take off that first half hour that we were it was recording. So I'll I gotta I gotta figure out how to how to do that after I stop it, um, and then I'll I gotta splice it up a little bit so, so not to include the first twenty minutes when we were just chatting or ten minutes. Right. So uh, I'm gonna we're gonna post it somewhere, but I also can share the file with you. That'd be great. Thanks. Jolene's still in there listening. What's that? All right, you guys all stay well. Yeah, you too. Right. See you down the Ah, um, that's where I am now. <laughs> Bye, Sharon. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Okay.